We got next uh, uh, Neil performing a piece called Alone. Neil, are you in the building? He's right there. He's like, yeah. I'm just alone back here. Let's uh, a round of applause for Neil all the way to the mic. Three, two, one, love. Three, two, one, love. Um, if I ruled the world, I would hire aliens to destroy all that is twisted. Curl. The aliens would then steal all oxygen, rainwater, and nitrogen, and humans would move to Mars and gobble only Mars bars. I would then destroy all the PlayStations <laughs> and then make the aliens worship Satan. <laughs> but sadly, there would be civil war when I went to the store. The aliens would rebel and destroy all the cathedrals with giant pebble. The humans would join them and I would have no friends. <laughs> Alone and abandoned because of what I did. Alone and abandoned when I could have anything. I was alone. So, I rebuilt the cathedral. I helped all the humans become regal. I may have bought all the PlayStations. And I let the aliens worship their own religions. I would buy back all the oxygen, rainwater, and nitrogen, and build a curling research facility, and say sorry. <laughs> but I would still be alone, because some things cannot be forgiven. Deserted, forsaken, dishonored, alone. So, I don't know if anybody was following that piece closely as I was, but did you notice how he started very abstract, very colorful, got your attention with a very um, freestyle type of story, but then it came into an important allegory, right? About the choices that we make and how it can cause you to be alone. So that was a deep poem, deeper than the humor that was added, deeper than the colorful imagery that he added. It had an allegory, which means it had an important message or lesson to be learned, right? Please give it up again for Neil. So how many cinepoems do we have left? We got one. Y'all want to see another cinepoem? Okay, we're going to film this last cinepoem, then we got about five more performances before we finish up our concert. Everybody feeling all right? Good, 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 good. Please pay attention to the screen as we film our cinepoem. Each word, a path to freedom, free from every darkest thought. Each paper, a canvas of feelings flowing out with a pencil, gushing like a river. Each story, oozing out of the mind, accelerating by the second. Each word, the treasure key to a desperate, unlocked heart. Keep that going, that was so artistic and beautiful. Short, sweet, powerful. It's called a micro poem, a micro cinepoem? Maybe that's something new we can coin. So next up we got Justine, who's gonna be performing a piece called Your Shadow Stretches for Miles. Please, make some noise and show some love for Justine all the way to the mic. Three, two, one, we're gonna do Raise It. Three, two, one, Raise It. So this is dedicated to somebody important to me. Your shadow stretches out for miles, casting a chilling darkness down the narrow road. You speak an orchestra of broken hearts and hellos that started with a goodbye. A lightning storm erupts from underneath your eyes, your hip bones jutting out of your body like shards of glass, weak smiles with teeth like razors and wrists so small they can barely raise you from the ground. Down this road of pills and antidepressants you walk, 
slowly at first, with steps measured by your faint breathing, your quiet heart beating like the wings of a butterfly, and sometimes I wonder for how long you can keep on flying. It appeared in your throat like a pair of scissors, lodged itself down too deep for you to claw out, too big for you to swallow down. I see the pressure of it make your eyes water. As it pulsates in your throat, slowly choking, you tell me you're scared, that you wait for it to dig its way out of your mouth, tearing your lips apart until it's impossible to smile anymore. But maybe sometimes you forget about the light behind you and the twinkling stars that reflect off your eyes. Oftentimes, when we face away from the light, we become too focused on our shadows, so you forget that you're shackled down by chemicals and pills, yet you still keep on walking. Your flutter of butterfly wings can cause hurricane. Your shadow is only long because of how bright your light is. The storm underneath your eyes is a beautiful rain. Your voice is as powerful and sharp as the blade of a knife. Keep that going, please, for Justine. All right, we're almost there, and you know, I have to commend. Can you give a round of applause to yourselves for sticking around and you know, keeping the seats warm for us? Seats need to be kept warm. Thank you very much, Justine. Uh, next up, we have Hosam performing a piece called This is a Revolution. Give it up for Hosam. All the way to the mic, all the way to the mic. Just before I begin, I'm going to borrow some poetry from a great poet, the, God, the godfather of rap, or godfather of poetry, Gil Scott Heron. So, yeah. Let me be clear, this is not a one-word poema. This is a nationwide dilemma. I am getting ready for a revolution. My mouth is my gun. It is cocked, locked loaded and ready to blow the back of your minds and, the he and your heads. Watch as the walls paint pink and red and let me invoke some emotion into you and open up your consciousness so you realize that we have a problem. This is before me, this revolution will not be televised. This revolution will not allow the government to tell lies. This revolution is about protecting black lives. This is a revolution. This is the battle for the world. This is the apocalypse, and it's happening now. I want the world so I can wipe off the hate with a, love, uh, with a love handkerchief, for we have made the world a hateful place rather than a place of love. We choose to see the differences rather than the similarities. This is a revolution. Keep the love going, keep that love going for Daisy, a special guest who's gonna give us a little bit of poetry. All the way to the stage, all the way to the stage. 10 more minutes and we get to loosen up. Go home on a Friday evening, enjoy some time with our families. Three, two, one. So before I speak, I'm just gonna plug another event. I used to be a part of Delhi Poetry Slam. Uh, spoken word poetry is not new to me. Currently, Delhi Poetry Slam, we're not the official group considering we can't make a lot of the rehearsal times as we're students. So currently we have a small group of student-led poetry and we're very interested. We perform at the Piano Man Cafe. If anyone would like to email me, I'm friendly and I don't bite. So email me, tell me you want to perform. We have no age limit. It's fun, we have an advertisement. Lots of people show up, we have a microphone. It's really great, it's at the Piano Man Cafe in the Priya Market Art Cafe. It's really great and we would love to see people there because this is more of a poetry for the sake of poetry, quite similar to this, but a quite a few more strangers. Okay. So seeing as I came up here anyways, I figured I should probably read a poem, considering I have a lot. <laughs> when I was young, I was always told, your body is a temple and you will treat it as such. But people never seem to understand that themselves. 
and instead I find men wandering in and out of it as if it's a soup kitchen for their convenience, breaking my ribs on the way in and pouring blood, spit, and sewage into bowls of bruised skin. And this could be a poem about anything, about love, family, wrong thoughts, right thoughts, hope and death and friends and loss. But instead, it is a poem about assholes that don't know what's not their own property. As that is all I am to them, and when I, and then them, when I can promise you, my bodily autonomy is not something split up in paperwork between people who try to claim it as their own. My body is no temple or soup kitchen. My body is my home. My bones are my structure. My frame is my own. My skin is a plaster that I took upon my height as I grew. My organs fuel me, and my blood permit paints the walls of what I am. My body is the only thing that's fully my own. So don't you dare try to take that away from me. My body is not up for foreclosure by men who want to run my limbs like a bank. I won't be having thieves in my heart or otherwise. I am my own, and you can never truly touch that until I let you. You can try and try, but I will never be owned by you. You are a burglar that tried to break me but can never enter. Because I'm a person, and more complex than no location. Because breaking and entering is a term for places, not people. Thank you, Daisy, for that powerful spoken word. Peace, can we keep the love going for Kaya performing home, the penultimate poet of the evening. All the way to the microphone. Give it three, two, one, speak. Three, two, one, speak. When I left Philly, the streets were dirty. Litter was scattered all over the streets. School was something I dreaded every morning, an endless amount of days and days repeating the same routine. Arriving in India, the streets were even filthier. Litter covered the streets. But yet in school, colors of flowers filled the campus. Gardeners and janitors maintained this beauty. When I left Philly, litter was blown across the recess yard. Teachers lost their jobs every single day. Students crammed in classrooms, thoughts jammed in a jar, hoping they could all fit. Arriving in India, the class sizes were a fraction of what they were in my old school. Students spread out comfortably on couches and desks, ready to learn. When I left Philly, the textbooks were old, beat up. Drawing from bored students drawn on every page. Rips and tears made it hard to read. Arriving in India, barely any books were used. They provided iPads that held all the answers. When I left Philly, my friends had no homes. Gambling fathers, abandoned mothers, leaving children with no direction. Arriving in India, students were busy every day with sports and with plays, free to do what they love and follow their dreams. When I left Philly, we were bored after school. We hung out on the recess yard, bouncing a beat up ball. But at the end of the day, we all had to go home. But in India, my friends never lasted. Moving from country to country, saying goodbye at the least expected time with no idea when they would return. In Philly, no one left. Their whole life was in Philly. <coughs> Their friends and their family were planted in the city and would never leave. I've always known Philly is my home. Philly is in me, and I've never really left. Thank you very much, Kaya, for performing that piece. Kaya's been working with Randy Kelly all week filming Cinepochi, so another round of applause for Kaya. All right, we've come to the last performance of the showcase. We have Nick doing a poem called Winning. Nick, are you here? Nick is in the building. Round of applause. Let's do a speak. Three, two, one, speak. Like, like most victorious, glamorous wins, my poem was done in the clutch. <laughs> winning. Winning, that feeling of winning is a feeling worth living. Even in a small game that gives you a teeny tiny moment of fame, that feeling of winning is a feeling worth living. Even the anticipation game before the fame is a lame excuse to leave the game. Even if you lose, have a little pain. You gain, you create a train that's on the way to fame. Don't hang your head low. You'll miss the conductor bellow all aboard to the train of fame. Thank you very much. And that is Nick. That is our spoken word concert. Make a lot of noise. Make a lot of noise.